Bom dia. I'm Clark Gregg for Cinema Planet. Obrigado. All right. So ever since the first season, the show has evolved so much. And especially now with the fifth season, you're now in space in the future. This has got to give you and the writers a lot of liberties with the storytelling. Uh, so uh, how much liberty does it actually give to you and the writers for you to go into the future with these characters? Um, it's uh, If this was just a show where you know, we were out looking for a leftover Chitauri weapon from the Avengers every week, I would be very bored doing the 102nd episode right now. Instead, and it's really the writers, the writers and the Marvel TV, Jeff Loeb, Megan Bradner, they decided to take chances and to tear the whole thing apart and start a new run. Like in the comics, you go one run and then you move to another one, different villains. We had Hydra, we had, you know, the crossover with Captain American Winter Soldier really changed the whole show. And then lately, it's really been the show has become about parts of the Marvel Universe people don't get to see in the movies so far, LMDs. Um, Ghost Rider had been in a couple of movies, but in a way, the technology has evolved so much. I think what Mark Kolpak and our visual effects team did, I think it's the best Ghost Rider there has been. It's really magnificent as far as I'm concerned. So it's very exciting to me to see where we're going. I don't usually know. I'll sit down at the beginning of the season or over the summer and they'll tell me we're going to space or I'll s or they shot that scene at the end of the thing where I'm looking out the window in space and and I said okay where where is that and they said there's only a little we're going to tell you now partly because they don't know they have an idea where we're going but then they have to write it and I know that once we got into future and time travel they really they wrote themselves into a very difficult place and I've seen them walking around trying to figure out where we're going and it's exciting. Especially in the first three episodes. I didn't notice this so much on the fourth. Coulson has a lot of lingering shots on him whenever information is provided to him. And so I'm like, he knows something. So does Coulson know something more than he lets on? And does Clark know something more than that we have already seen? Um... I found early on that I didn't like knowing too much. I liked knowing basically what Coulson knows. Every once in a while they need to tell me this is what's about to happen. Um, but mostly I only know what he knows. So I like that you th saw that there are some things that Coulson knows, but not much that the others don't. And... I think it's one of the fun things about this season is a lot of times we know more than the audience knows, but in this ep this season you see us suddenly somewhere else. We don't even know where we are or what year it is or anything, and so we're finding out as the audience does, which is exciting. So we've learned that Daisy was the one that destroyed the Earth, but my question is, does that have to do with a certain mad titan from space with a gauntlet in his hand and a certain mind-controlling gem. I mean, that would be very exciting. Uh, again, that would be one of those things that they haven't told me yet. I suspect that, I suspect that um, Thanos, who you're, you're talking about, will be very busy with, I, I think, not just the Avengers. I mean, Black Panther, who's, I guess, now going to be an Avenger. Everybody, Spider-Man, everyone that I know about. Ant-Man, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if Daredevil, I don't know, everyone is going to be fighting against Thanos. I suspect that this, if it's like our show has become, we'll be dealing with the part of Marvel that's in space, but I don't know that it'll be Thanos. With your show has evolved so much, you could now go into the Netflix shows. Do you have a particular one that you'd like to go in more than the others or one that you think your show would fit in more with the others? The Netflix shows are so specifically gritty New York. I love that world. And I mean, it doesn't fit with where we are right now, but it all changes. Ever Like in four weeks, we might be in a completely different place. I don't know. I mean, I'm torn about this. I love those shows. I, I'm a big fan of Charlie Cox and Daredevil and Jessica Jones and Luke Cage and The Defenders is really cool. And, and yet... I haven't gotten to because we've been working so much, but uh, John Bernthal's terrific. I can't wait to see it. I, in our, the first year or two of our show, people spent a lot of time saying, well, when is Thor going to show up? And 
And then by the second and third season, people were just wanting to know that Fitz was going to be okay and what's happening with Daisy and, you know, is her mother good or evil? And I like... I like that our show has got a storyline that's completely it's self-contained now. We get to play with things in the Marvel Universe like the LMDs, like uh, the framework, and things that uh, our show exists on its own. So if we get some crossovers, great, but I don't need crossovers for crossover's sake. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just when it could tell a great story we haven't told before. Uh, last question. The fourth episode ends with... Fitz taking off the mask. What's up with that? What? I know. Fitz takes off the mask, and I believe he suggests that Daisy's fight should be to the death. Yeah. So we don't even know if this is framework Fitz, who's evil, or regular Fitz. All I know is I'm really glad Ian DeCastecker's back, because the story had us separated from him by 70 years yeah. for a while, and I love him as a person and an actor so much. I'm very happy he's back. Thank you so much. Once more, thank you for bringing the Avengers together, bringing S.H.I.E.L.D. together. It was my pleasure. It was a pleasure talking to you. Clark Gregg from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Phil Coulson is here in Portugal, Comic-Con Portugal. Thank you so much. Thank you.